Hi, we're a group of undergraduate students at the University of Glasgow from Region 8 competing in the second stage of the CAS Student Design Competition 2020. Our team has created an innovative device that addresses one of today's deadliest diseases. Malaria is a life-threatening condition which continues to afflict millions worldwide. The World Health Organization stated that in 2017 there were around 219 million malaria cases. Although we've known the cure for malaria since the 1600s, why does it continue to kill hundreds and thousands of people till this day? Scientifically, it's a challenge because the pathogen is very complex. It's always finding new ways to evade new treatments. The second is economical, and this is what we'll focus on for this project. Most of the regions affected by malaria are regions like Sub-Saharan Africa where there is a huge lack of resources. A distinctive feature of malaria-infected red blood cells is the presence of the heme component. The heme component is slightly paramagnetic and we focus on this distinct quality to be able to apply our device that we've created. The reason for choosing magnetic approach is that as a parasite digests the hemoglobins, it creates what is known as heme as a byproduct which is paramagnetic. The paramagnetic particle itself is not a magnet and could not produce magnetic field. However, when an external magnetic field exists around the particle, it will become a magnet producing in-plane magnetic field which could be sensed by the TMR biosensor. The tunnel magneto resistance effect is a nanoscale phenomenon in which, under the right conditions, electrons can tunnel through a very thin, ordinary insulating material. The figure shows a basic structure consisting of three layer, bare layer, pinned layers, and its transfer curve. The change of resistance occurs due to the dependence of the tunneling probability on the relative orientation of magnetization in the two ferromagnetic layers, which is a free layer and a pinned layer. The largest and the lowest resistance values are obtained when the ferromagnetic layers have anti-parallel and parallel orientations respectively. With a proper analog circuit we design, the characteristic could be converted to a voltage that varies as a linear function of the magnetic field strength over a certain field range. As an extremely important part of the biosensor, a Harbach array with 12 magnets is used to create a unique magnetic field for the detection with TMR sensors. Ideally, the environmental magnetic field need needed here should be totally perpendicular to the TMR sensor plane, which could ensure the output of the sensor is zero when there is no sample presented. In practical, due to the limitations, our aim is to produce a ma magnetic field that has the maximum magnetic flux density perpendicular to the TMR sensor plane and the near zero density in the sensor plane. The choice of the rotatable design is to compensate for the possible symmetry caused by the misalignments in the 3D printing model and the small differences in the magnets. A simple rotation of the hardware could help us find the best working configuration. The magnetic TMR system includes a TMR sensor as well as a digital and analog electronics part which are needed for generating useful electrical signals from the magnetic field. The basic structure of the TMR sensor array is a wisdom bridge which can significantly increase the sensitivity of magnetic sensing and decrease output offset from temperature. The bridge output is sent to an analog front end including amplifier, filter and analog to digital converter. The function of trans-impedance amplifier can not only amplify small signals, but also can convert current to voltage. After the analog to digital converter, the final signals are collected at the back-end signal processor for pre-processing. Finally, the processor signals will be extracted, selected, and classified based on different features, and eventually shown on the PC interface. We are now taking uh, real-time measurement by using the paramagnetic sample. As you can see, if we place the sample on the TMR sensor, there is a real-time detection on the lab view interface. As you can see from these examples, our device is able to efficiently filter unwanted noise and display a clean output, which can then be read by the end user. 
To conclude, our device addresses some of the key challenges that we face while using conventional malaria diagnostic procedures. Our device is cheap, portable and doesn't require any experts to be able to operate it or, or interpret it, the results. This is essential to diagnose malaria early on and provide the necessary treatment to the patients and further down the line eradicate it completely.